happen in jiu-jitsu that's out of our control, right? Um, and the thing that happens a lot, um, you know, we always say when you're doing a guillotine, you don't want to have, or oh, sorry, a double leg, you don't want to have your head on the same side, because if you do, you're gonna get your head wrapped, you're gonna get guillotined, right? Um, but sometimes it happens. Um, you know, you make decisions, sometimes they don't pan out, and we have to deal with the consequences of those decisions, right? So we need to be able to deal with the situation where uh, we end up like taking someone down when we're, we're probably gonna end up on the wrong side. To start is a nice drill, right? A uh, person on bottom is just gonna put me in a guillotine. All right. My, right, my job is I'm gonna make sure he's flat. I'm gonna put my shoulder in his ribs and I'm gonna guide my hips up and over to the safe side here, right? When I do that, um, especially with the arm in, I'm just gonna keep my hands focused on the hips. Right? Because when I get to the safe side, I want to be able to keep him from turning into me and escaping. Right, So my hands on the hips are going to give me the power to move his hips in different directions here. So I know a lot of people, when they get to the side, their first instinct is to try and like scoop this head and flatten him out and like threaten the bomb flu choke. But um, A, uh, probably won't work if it's an arm and guillotine. Right? He's blocking that space. And B, um, it's, it can be a big movement. Right, Even if he's not blocking my... Uh, arm here, right? If my hips are all the way down here, this is the far distance to travel to scoop his head. All right, so that might not be a thing that I feel like I can do. All right, so there are other options, right, other than scooping the head. What I'm focusing on is putting my, my shoulder into his chest and using that pressure to incentivize him to stop choking me. All right, so we drive, make sure he's flat. My right arm here is going to help block this hip space. Right? If I just jump over lazily, he's going to use his legs to catch me. Right? And then I'm, uh, I'm out of luck. I'm not going to be able to escape that as easily. Right? So this hand, I can feel what's going on with his hips. Right? And if he's uh, trying to use his legs to escape, I'm going to be active with using my arm to help me avoid it. Right? And again, my arms keep me connected to his hips here. Right? I'm, just gonna pressure with the shoulder here. All right, what I can do is, if he lets go, I can just walk this up with his hips. Otherwise, if he doesn't, like, I'm just probably gonna hang out here um, until he feels uncomfortable um, enough to where he feels like he, he needs to move on. All right, he can't finish me here. All right, as long as I'm not like way over here, he's not gonna be able to uh, like uh, throw me over here. So I'm just gonna keep good control over his hips, keep my weight, uh, kind of centered on one part of my shoulder, and I'm going to drive that into his chest until he doesn't want to be here anymore. Just keeping myself safe. All right, other options? So here, I leave this arm in contact with the hips and the legs. All right, so if he tries to turn towards me, right, I can use this arm to block that space. All right, and my legs can come in and help out as well. All right. And then I'm gonna, I can wait here for him to let go. If he doesn't let go, right, that's when usually, all right, I'm gonna take this elbow and I'm gonna move it across the body. And then we can start pushing our hips back into north south. That can be a little dangerous though, because if he has an angle on you, right, with the, uh, if you still have my head scoops. Right? If I'm really lazy here, he might head on trying to leave. We're going to you. Alright, so that's, that's a very real danger. So when I do reach across with my elbow like that, I need to make sure that I have my shoulder pulled down and he can't squish my head up into my, my neck. So you're like actively, like you keep this arm right over on the leg already. Yeah. And then I can really focus my shoulder pressure here. Alright. And work our way back into this side. It's mostly the shoulder pressure that I'm looking for. Um, Alright, so the same way we're putting all of our weight in the shoulder here. I want to be able to get super connected on this leg if I'm breaking it down uh, to like pass his guard here. All right, and there are two options that 
we can look at. The one is going to be the more easy one, right? When we reach across here and pull, right? And now I can come up on my shoulder, right? And use this as a pivot point to either come around this way or around the other way. But then there's also one thing that I've been drilling where we come into this uh, gable grip here and just work on like staying connected here and actually as a way to stay kind of locked in and just getting used to to moving with like that piece locked down and going around the hips and using it to control the direction of your hips as well. But I think one of the the harder things to get used to, especially if for like pressure passing, is like getting used to driving and then planting your weight and keeping it here where you feel comfortable. Um, especially if people are like moving around a whole bunch or yeah, like pushing and doing like stuff. Right? I'm, I'm looking for a, a reliable way to keep myself connected. And just kind of pulling his knee into my shoulder or the gable grip. I'm just practicing, you know, keeping your weight driven in. I never want to be relaxed here, right? I want to be able to keep good pressure throughout and keep aware, awareness of what's going on with his hips, it's kind of like my relation to them. Shoulder. Shoulder. I'm going to be able to move your hips around. 